guys and welcome to the channel. Today I wanted to do the first steps with the Taranis QX7 uh, so we can start flying with our drone. But before anything I wanted to say big thank you for all subscribers because I got more than 500 subscribers already. It's a little bit for most of uh, YouTubers but uh, I'm very glad for that. Thank you very much. And the other thing is I recommend you to follow me in Facebook just because it's for me easier to add new pictures and uh, some comments about uh, the progress I'm doing with uh, the drones and, and with the reviews, okay? In the previous review I was talking about the protocols that this uh, radio can handle and I wanted uh, to summarize and recommend you uh, which ones are best for you. The PWM is a very old protocol, it's using one wire for each uh, channel uh, so it will be a mess of cables and it's not that good protocol the, uh, usually receivers are much bigger because of all these connectors so forget about them and, and go straight to PPM and SBAS uh, protocols they are both pretty similar uh, with a few differences uh, PPM is a little bit older, is a little bit slower but uh, okay, take, take into account that still slower is uh, more than enough for most of the uh, pilots and shouldn't be a big difference it's, uh, the SBAS is uh, like about uh, a couple of times faster than uh, PPM, but still both are great. Uh, PPM is taking its specific uh, input, not any UR port, and SBAS on the other hand is taking one full UR port. That means that if you don't have many UR ports and you want to add a lot of devices such as uh, GPA, you want to have telemetry and a lot of things, you might think uh, that maybe it's better to keep PPM. Okay, before I was using mm, generic uh, receivers because the FR Sky were pretty expensive. But nowadays the situation completely changed and you can find very cheap uh, FR Sky receivers for 10 euros with a good range and, and good features with SBAS and which, uh, with a very small size because they are usually doing for very small drones. And I think you shouldn't bother looking for a little bit cheaper receiver. Uh, even if I'm showing this e range X, I don't recommend you this uh, kind of receivers. Go straight to FR Sky. You have plenty of, of options. In the latest month, you, you got a lot of uh, variants, even uh, flight controller boards with the built-in receiver. So forget about other brands, forget about PWM, as I said, and go straight to FR Sky. I will add some uh, recommendations in the links below because you have the cheapest one uh, of FR Sky is very little it has uh, SBAS it has a range about 600 meters that I think is quite enough for beginners and, and to have a very cheap uh, build uh, but still if you want to have a more range you can go to the XMP processor that is having uh, some of the receivers it should give you full range with uh, two antennas, so diversity. And when I say full range, it's supposed to be about 1.5 kilometers, more or less. You know that there are many variants about that. But that's uh, what FR Sky calls uh, full range. And then, uh, telemetry. This is the... Okay, it's a more advanced feature, of course, and it will cost a little bit more. You can have the XSR a receiver that is about 27 euros or something like that. But you can have also the new flight controller board that it's about 40 euros and you can have a 10 DOF flight controller board with F3 and with built-in XSR processor. Okay, so you will not have to worry about how to connect the SBAS, how to connect the telemetry. They are built-in, they are already connected. You will not have the mess of cables and, and boards. It's a very clean setup and I really recommend that uh, option. Let's go to the adjustments. In this uh, part I will do three very small changes. I will change the throttle stick so I can have move to. I will remove the handler and I will add the belt okay, for hanging from the neck. Use something soft for the sticks, uh, something like a towel. There are two screws to adjust the, the strength and how hard is uh, pushing the throttle so I recommend the interior uh, screw to tighten to the max and such way I, I like the way it feels the throttle but you can do your way be careful when you remove the spring uh, keep it safe I usually 
put a, like a tape and keep it inside the remote, the, inside the radio, so I can use in the future. Because if you save somewhere else, in one year you will have no idea where you kept the, the screen. So keep it inside the radio is my advice. Now I like the way it feels, pretty strong. And when I remove the handle, I still keep uh, another screws to avoid that uh, some dust or water or anything can go through the holes. So that was my uh, way of doing it. Most of us maybe mm, don't want to remove the handle, I prefer to remove it because mm, it looks like thinner and smaller and it takes a little bit less space in the backpack, so well, that was my personal choice, you can do your way. Simply when you put the cover, take into account that you have the uh, pins that should fit through the hole. It can take you a while, take into account that you should first do that part, like you remove the, the cover in the back and then do a precise uh, position of the uh, pins through the hole. Let's go to the binding part. This is also very easy. One thing we have to take into account is the kind of protocol that our receiver has. Uh, nowadays, most of my receivers are using V16, so that's the option you will have to choose in our uh, model setup. We go to the setup page, we go down, scroll down, and here we can see like that we have D8, D16, and LR12. We will usually use D8 and D16, okay? But uh, be sure before which kind of receiver you have. For, for example, XSR is using D16. It will give us 16 channels. Then we press, we should press bind, but first let's power the battery, where is plug the receiver and uh, we press the binding button before we uh, give the voltage. Then we press bind, we wait for a second, we saw how it changed the way that the LEDs are blinking, we press back in the bind button and we can unplug the battery, unplug it again. Then we see how it became green, that means that it's binded, we are done. That's fine. If we change, for example, the mode to D8 or to another mode, we'll see how it's red. But then D8, okay, you can see how it's red, and then we again set D16, it will be green. So that's fine. It's binded, very easy. If we would have an external module in the like in the 29 XR Pro, we were having the XGT FR Sky, and we had to change the switches. So now let's verify that we have correctly associated the channels. Probably the, for the first time we didn't do anything, they will not match the movements of our uh, drone. So let's go to the clean flight uh, configuration. We ensure that we are set up our uh, configuration correctly. Uh, if we don't see that these bars are moving, it doesn't matter to which values, we simply want to be sure that it's okay, we have to go to the configuration, be sure if we have set up uh, the protocol we are using, 
So for example, we are using a PPM wire connected to the PPM input. We have to set there uh, the PPM. If we are using SBUS, we have to uh, set the serial RX in the UART that we connected uh, our uh, SBUS okay. right? So, now that we are in the receiver, we have here this uh, cheat sheet that I did to know how the channel should uh, be associated to each stick. Okay, we see that now some of them they are not uh, correct. So we go first to radio setup and then okay we select this option mode 2 and this RX uh, channel order is not the most important thing but it's good to have it uh, right and then we go to mixer we have to be sure that the movement of the for example the roll is moving uh, like I showed in the image and then here we can move each uh, direction or each movement up and down so we finally see that all the movements are right in the clean flight configuration and we will associate uh, the sticks to the to another four channels it's very easy simply mixer we'll have to move the stick we want simply in source we click the stick and it's done now we can see how the bars from aux1 to aux4 are moving we have set up four channels uh, for the three position switches that will let us uh, a lot of options and other thing we need to do is to center the middle position of all the inputs. Uh, we can go to outputs and uh, in each channel we can set a, some kind of a multiplier so the center is moving and we we'll have uh, 1500 in the center. You can see center you can you have to center also the throttle to the middle position and you will see how more or less they will be all in about 15 thousand that's uh, also very important to have we can go to modes and to set our uh, modes for example uh, the arm mode the horizon or air mode black box uh, beeper whatever okay you can verify do it your way and ensure they are fine always remember to remove the propellers don't play with that, it can harm you a lot. And we see everything is fine. Okay, so that's good. Oh well, at this point, our radio is ready to fly. I just wanted to say that I designed some covers for the main sticks so they can be safe uh, when they are stored in our backpack and you can download for free at Pinsafe hope you enjoy them uh, thank you very much for watching this video you, can, you know that you can subscribe, like and all these kind of things I'm very glad that you do that and remember to follow me in Facebook just because it's very easy for me to add new contents pictures and information about next reviews thank you very much, see you next time